Hello, my beautiful friends! It's Marie here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined by my little ballerina, Hi guys. sister Sonia. So if you guys don't know who we are, my name is Maria Khoreva. I'm a first soloist with the Marinsky Ballet in St. Petersburg, Russia. And this is my little sister, Sonia, and she's studying at Vaganova Academy. She's at her pre-graduate year. So today we are going to be doing ballerinas react to your guys's assumptions about ballet life. So recently I asked you guys on Instagram stories, what were your assumptions? What uh, did you want to know about ballet life? And I didn't want to read them actually. I asked Sonia to read them and pick her favorites. And she picked a list and she's going to be reading this list to me and I'm going to be reacting and she's going to be adding her opinion. I wanted them to be a surprise for me. So I think it's going to be lots of fun and I'm so excited to dig into these assumptions. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys because there were a lot of very interesting assumptions to choose from. So yeah, let's start the video. The majority was about the diet and that ballerinas don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we want to bust that myth right away because ballerinas are human ballerinas, ballet dancers are sportsmen and we have to train a lot and we spend a lot of energy on training and performing and rehearsing so we have to eat like sportsmen and like athletes and we have to have a lot of energy obviously and personally us we don't really have like a strict diet we just try eating healthy not eating junk food and all of the things that are unhealthy for your body we just have to nourish our body and respect it for doing so much work so ballerinas eat and let's start with the other assumptions the first assumption is that you don't have friends outside the theater and frequently married among yourselves. <laughs> well, it's not true because uh, some of us marry choreographers or members of the orchestra, <laughs> the musicians or teachers, even the coaches. But if we are being serious, it's like partially true because it's very common to have ballet couples uh, in a ballet company. We have a few ballet couples that are married or just dating and I think it's very sweet and cute. But it is just partially true because some of the dancers obviously have friends outside of ballet and it's, it's very personal, but I'd say it's pretty common. The next one is that ballerinas don't need to study like math, etc. Well, we have to study math at least because we have to do 32 four days and we have to know the counts to 32 and maybe we don't yeah. have to know the count of 33. <laughs> Again, if we are being serious, like we do study and quite a lot and Sonia will tell you and I was also studying at Vaganova. At Vaganova it's, a, it's yeah. quite a serious education. We to be also honest. have uh, some interesting subjects like the history of choreography, the history of theaters and stuff like this. It's very interesting and uh, yeah, we study like normal, normal people and... Uh... Yeah, we have general education subjects at Vaganova and quite a lot of them. And only uh, in the last years of Vaganova education, we have this ballet special subjects like history of theater, history of ballet and stuff. But we do have English at school, we do have maths, chemistry and all of that stuff. So we, I mean, we are educated. The next one is that I think it is hard not to fall in love with their co-dancer because ballet has a romantic nature. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a Tell funny me. one. This is a funny one. Well, I think dancers are professionals and you know how we are all like watching behind the scenes of actors playing romantic uh, melodramas and like the actors from dramas, TV dramas. And I mean, they're maybe playing the very romantic relationship on screen, but off screen, they're just friends. It's the same in ballet. Um, we are professionals and we just have to do our job, but we really have to express our deepest romantic feeling when we are on stage with our partner. And it's, it's very nice. It's, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, but it's all happening just on, on stage. stage. Yeah. yeah. The next one is that dancers have to end their professional career before they are 30 years old. 
No, that is absolutely not true. Um, usually dancers uh, stop dancing and end their careers. Um, but if you want to, you can stop your career. But... Yeah, if you want to, but usually the dancers stop when they are around 40 years old. So it's um, you have to dance for 20 years and then you can stop. And usually it's happening around 40 years because you graduate from a mm -hmm. ballet school when you're around 20. But if you want, you can keep dancing. If you're feeling powerful and strong enough, you can keep dancing. I know that Plisetskaya danced till she was like 70 years old. And for example, Kolpakova in the 20th century, the genius Kolpakova, she was dancing. Can you imagine? She was performing Aurora and Raimonda when she was 50 and they filmed it for the Russian yeah, television. And she nailed it. Like... Yeah, like she nailed it. We all learn these roles the from her repertoire. videos. Aurora and Raimonda are like the die hard pieces, like the hardest roles out there and like dancing them when you're 50. Wow, this is like so Incredible. admirable. But yeah, if you are feeling powerful, obviously when you're like around 40, it's going to get more difficult to dance and you can choose whatever you want but uh, some legendary ballerinas proved that you can dance whenever the next one is uh, all ballet dancers walk turned out <laughs> like charlie chaplin uh, well that is not true i think but like again partially true mm -hmm. for some dancers it's true for some it's not most of the dancers walk a little bit turned out. And but, like, nobody walks in the first position? <laughs> yeah, most dancers walk differently than, like, normal people. But even though I really try working on my turnout during the classes and the rehearsals and when I'm performing on stage, I still, my feet don't want to walk turned excuse out. Excuse me! Yeah, excuse me, like, why don't you? I've always wanted to walk turned out when I was little because I thought that it was like mm, all of the ballerinas walk turned out but my feet don't do it for some reason i think it's just i calm myself down mm, saying that it can be just individual and my stuff with turnout is not that bad but i think some do and some don't it's just physical possibilities yeah. i guess if you share costumes with other dancers, it can be gross because it gets sweaty. We don't really think about that, to be honest. We do share costumes with other people, but at the Mariinsky you can get a costume of Diana Vishnyova or yeah, the it, costume of Ulyana Lapatkina, for example. It's so cool because uh, you feel like the energy of the person who danced in that costume before at the Vakanova Ballet Academy, I sometimes get Masha's costumes for like snowflakes in the Nutcracker and so on. And it's so inspiring. But you guys, of course, we wash the costume ladies, wash the costumes for us between the performances. And we ask them to wash off only the sweat, but not wash off the energy of the person who danced in this costume before. Important. It is very important. <laughs> Of course, I am joking, but, um, well, yeah, costume ladies uh, quite frequently wash the costumes, so it doesn't get, like, very gross, but we really just don't think about these details. When you dance in a costume mm -hmm. of a legend, you don't think about the sweat, you think about the energy. And plus, the costumes are so beautiful, you don't really think about them get getting dirty. You have more ballet clothes than regular street clothes. Oh! <laughs> Well, I was just decluttering my closet and it turned out like I can really actually be having more ballet clothes than uh, my regular clothes. It is taking so much space, you guys, like point shoes, flats, all of the leotards and all of the skirts and all of the warm-up stuff, the athleisure wear. Sonia probably doesn't uh, have so many ballet clothes yet, yeah, but because I... we have uniform at our school, Grishka uniform, yeah. We have only three colors of leotards. <laughs> but she's gonna have soon, it's going to be all over the apartment, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot of ballet clothes and I'm thankful that I'm having uh, the variety of clothes to choose from, to wear to the rehearsals and classes. 
but yeah, it's a lot. There is no time for other things in life when you are pre-professional training or when you are a pro dancer in a company. Hmm, that is, that is true, but I, I think I want to clarify for you guys that in my personal opinion, it is much harder in this aspect for a professional dancer. So Sony is uh, studying at Vaganova Academy and I think their schedule is much, much, much more like intense because let me explain to you. At the Marinsky Theater, we don't have a very regular schedule. The only thing that is regular is ballet class in the morning at 11 a.m. And then we can be having like one rehearsal a day for one hour and we can be done like at 2 p.m. Or we can be having like eight rehearsals and working non-stop till like 8 p.m. Or we can be having a performance at uh, night and... Uh, till tomorrow. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, till like 11 p.m., like 12 a.m. So it is very irregular and it is changing all the time. But at the Vaganova, you guys, you have regular schedule. Yeah, fixed schedule for every day. We have... Um... The morning class at 9 a.m. and then we have... 9 a.m. Class at 9 a.m. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, and then we have um, the regular subjects and then we have like... The general uh, education subjects, yeah, right? Yeah. And then we have like padador or acting or character dance and then we have rehearsals. So when they are finishing, can you imagine starting at 9 a.m. and finishing like 7.30? Which is crazy. Seven, 8, 7.30 p.m., 8 p.m., 7 yeah, 7-ish p.m. And every day. And I think it's much harder to have uh, personal time and spare time when you are studying at a ballet school because you have to also focus on the general subjects and uh, general education subjects and like character and partnering and acting and not only on the rehearsals and ballet class. And it's just a lot and you have still um, to do your homework and like writing and it is, it is very stressful and it takes all of your mind and all of your thoughts. But whilst um, when you're at the professional company, you have to only concentrate on the rehearsals and concentrate on the ballet and on your performances, which is also hard, but it's different and you have the... The thing that you love to do the most in this world, you have your ballet and you don't have to worry about anything else. So I think like mentally it's it's easier and you can kind of manipulate your time and have a little bit of a little bit more free time, I guess. Yeah, but you get to know your schedule like at 11 p.m. Uh, yeah, this is another for tomorrow. thing. Yeah, at the Marinsky, we get to know our schedule for tomorrow, the day, like the evening before tomorrow. And you sometimes we have our days off on Monday, but sometimes we don't. So we cannot really plan anything. But I don't know. I still think it is easier. It gets easier when you get to a professional company. Does it really hurt or when you love to dance, you don't feel pain? Yeah, actually a lot of the assumptions were that ballerinas are always in pain and their body is really hurt. Um, it, it is true. It is like one ballerina said that if you don't feel the pain, you are not alive in ballet. And that is true. We are always dealing with muscle pain because we work a lot and we are dealing with micro injuries uh, and overuse of the muscles and the joints and sometimes uh, accidents happen like we can injure our partners for example. I was just reading the book about Maya Plisetska and she was remembering that on tour in London or somewhere she did the pirouette and she injured, she broke the nose of her partner and he had an open fracture of her nose, of his nose. Can you imagine? Like an open fracture. But this was obviously an accident and these things happen. I also many, many times stepped on the foot of my partner or like uh, made something with my elbow. But things happen and we do live like in constant pain, but it's not as bad as you would think. Like we do have like blisters and bruises on our feet because of dancing in point shoes. And we do have sore muscles quite often, 
But sore muscles are not a big problem because sometimes so sometimes they do really hurt, which is really pain. bad. But sometimes you know that it is a good pain because like yesterday you worked on this muscle and today it is hurting, which means that it is getting stronger. But um, concerning the second half of the question, if you love to dance, it doesn't really hurt. It is also true, because when you go on stage, there's adrenaline, there's emotions, there's the story or, which you have to tell, mm -hmm. and you don't really feel the pain of the blister or like the pain of even the injury, even if you're dancing injured, which sometimes also happens. Mm -hmm. You don't feel your injury when you're dancing, because it's just the magic of the stage. But, you know, the next day, gosh, <laughs> it gets hard. But you get used to it. You get used to this pain and you don't really pay a lot of attention to it. It's fine. The next one is that the day starts early in the morning with training and ends at night with the performance. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. We already touched the subject of schedule mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. But uh, yeah, it is true, but not every day. Uh, for example, corps de ballet members at the Marinsky Theatre, they go on stage almost every day. And they start their working day in the morning with the ballet class and they, they have, then they have rehearsals almost all day long. They can have like many, many, many rehearsals. Real life heroes. Yeah, they are just real life heroes. We have to bow in front of them really. And they go on stage almost every day and they can be dancing like three acts of Swan Lake or in each act of Bayer finishing like with the shades, which are so hard. And mm -hmm. for them, every day is pretty similar, like finishing at night and getting up in the morning and going to the ballet class. But for soloists, for example, it can vary. It can be different. There is more diversity because as I already said, when we, we can have only one rehearsal, we can have very, very, very many rehearsals. We don't have the performances every day. We have a performance like every week or so, every two weeks, so about four or five times a month. And when we have a leading role in a performance, we don't rehearse because we have to save the energy for the stage. And um, it's for the soloists, it's class, then rehearsals, or class, and then an evening performance. So something like that, usually. You are the opposite of a sweet tooth. <laughs> we are sweet teeth <laughs> together. <laughs> No, 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 so not true. We love sweets and yeah, it's my personal guilty pleasure. And I have a hobby of baking and making desserts. And just recently I made a, for New Year's I, celebrations, I made matcha tiramisu. It was so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, it was a lot of work, but I was so happy that I made it because it's you know always such a mess in the kitchen <laughs> but matcha i love matcha love japanese culture love matcha and yeah matcha tiramisu was amazing but we do really really love sweets and it's ooh, it's shameful but it's true the next one is that um, ballerinas are on painkillers often <sighs> this is a, a a very sad one it is it is true I would say, but it is not that we like love taking painkillers. Sometimes we have to go on stage a little bit injured, like micro injury that is okay to dance with, or sometimes the muscle can hurt, or sometimes you just have like a back pain or something, but you still have to go and dance. And well, it's usually, you really have to control your body. And usually if you can, Take it, if you can deal with it, deal with this pain, the adrenaline will come and you won't need painkillers. But for example, for the rehearsal, it can be really unbearable. The pain can be not dangerous, but very bad. So sometimes you really have to take pain, take painkiller. But we belly people don't like taking a lot of painkillers really, because it is, you know, cheating on your body. When it is trying to tell you that it is hurting 
and you're just like taking a painkiller and killing this pain and killing the intention of your body saying that something is wrong. So I'd rather be dealing with the pain than yeah, killing it. Yeah, you always said that if you can not use a painkiller, please don't because yeah, you need to feel your body. Yeah, plus they're addictive uh, and... They can work for some time and then stop working if you take too many pills. So it is quite dangerous, but sometimes they are the only thing that can save you. So they're important, but also they are dangerous. So we have to be really careful. The next one is more fun. <laughs> you randomly crack all the joints in your feet. <laughs> oh my god! I knew it! Oh, we do, like we so do. It is gross. But yeah, we do. We have like this habit of cracking everything, but we have to stop doing it. But sometimes you have to crack your foot in order for yeah. it to look beautiful and to be flexible. So Otherwise we have to do like it sometimes. It. Yeah, we have to do it sometimes, but... <laughs> Usually we just do it out of like pleasure or something, but yeah, when we yeah. are bored, like <laughs> it's it, it's gross. But every time I'm like reading or hearing about cracking, uh, hearing about that you have uh, to stop cracking your joints, I need to crack them. I like <laughs> really need. There comes the huge desire to crack something immediately. So it's it's a very bad habit, but we do have it. You don't speak English. You guys are so dumb. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support. It really means a lot for us. <laughs> you hate doing ba ballet class. I love doing ballet class, honestly. But I think this is partially true. Because sometimes, you know, after a very, very difficult performance, after a very tough day, you have to go to the ballet class and something hurts and you have to warm it up. And ballet class is a process of warming up your body and it can be painful. It can be difficult after a tough day. So sometimes it's like taking a medication that, uh, you know, is going to help, but tastes really, really bad, really bitter. Sometimes it's like this, but I love ballet class, really. It's my personal meditation. So, I don't know, it's, it's like love-hate relationships because it's the thing that we do most often in our life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we kind of develop this very strange relationship. You have had a major wardrobe fail, but could fix it just in time. <laughs> Actually, I've had these situations And we did manage to get the costume fixed right in time. And the first one was the filming of a TV show Grand Ballet uh, at Mosfilm in Russia, um, in Moscow in Russia. And before one of the episodes were filmed, so I realized, I saw that on the costume for Raimondo Adagio, one stripe was sewn on like really, really not symmetrical. So the one was like this and the other one was like this, like really, really uneven. And so, so there were no costume people, belly costume people on set. And the makeup lady, uh, the makeup artist that would, she was doing my makeup looks and hair for the show, she was sewing uh, my stripe like five minutes before we had to go on stage, which was very stressful, but Thanks so much to her. She literally saved my life. Because can you imagine like appearing on TV with the uneven stripes? I don't know how it turned out like this, but something happened with my costume. So yeah, so we were sewing it on um, five minutes before going on stage, but it turned out really nicely. And then the second one was when I was uh, dancing my debut in Corsair, the role of Medora. And I, my tiara got stuck in the net of the wings and I was just, you know, going on stage. There's this part of the ballet where you have to run on stage and just like show yourself and do a couple of pantomime things. 
and then you have like three minutes and then you have to go and dance the pas de deux, the famous course or pas de deux with foot and this hard variation. So just when I was running on stage, I got stuck <laughs> with the net and it like uh, ruins my hairdo a little bit. So I went uh, to the wings and we called for the hairdresser and she was like very, very quickly pinning my tiara back. It was also very, very stressful, but we managed to fix it like a minute before the pas de which is really cool. Thanks so much Phew. for all the professionals. Yeah, it was stressful. You wear whatever you want to class and rehearsals. Hmm. I, I'm not. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sonia, Sonia has uniform at Faganova. Yeah, we have three different colors, as I already said. Um, different grades wear different colors. Right now I'm wearing like a coffee leotard. Coffee colored leotard. Yeah, it, it's um, for the last three years of, um, of the Faganova Bell Academy. Yeah, um, while you're at school, you have to wear a classic ballet uniform, which is leotard, tights, pink tights, and a skirt. And this remains the classic ballet uniform for the theater. And you have to rehearse in leotard, tights, and like a tutu or a skirt, because it has to be comfortable for your partner if you are doing some partnering and duet scenes. Um, but duet choreography... Uh, it, it can help you get used to the costume. Yes, yes. So wearing a tutu is helping you and your partner get used to the costume. But uh, you can wear different styles of leotards, different colors of leotards, different colors of tutus, different colors of tights. It's up to you really at the theater, which is so much fun. But also to the class, you can like, I would say you can wear whatever you want as long as it's athletic, as long as you can see your legs and your body. For example, I wear something like uh, my current outfit, like a tank top, a sports bra, a black uh, ballet tights and a sports shorts for a class because I think it's more comfortable for me and I feel my legs better for some reason. But um, yeah. I think nobody will judge you if you wear pajama shorts. Uh, well, yeah, no one will judge you and you can wear whatever is comfortable for you. But some of the dancers prefer wearing beautiful leotards and tights because they want to really see their body and they want to be very belly like which is beautiful. Some dancers wear more like sports style, clo style clothes and this is beautiful to see different dancers and I think we can show the pictures of me at the class if, yeah if you guys are interested and me at the rehearsals, uh, these are the outfits. Um, yeah, so we'll edit the pictures here and hopefully this answers the assumptions nicely. These were all of the assumptions for the today. Thank you so oh, much, really? Masha. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys, for writing all of your assumptions and give this video a thumbs up if you want to see this part two and let us know in the comments. I think it was so much fun. I'm like really used to giving like the corrections or giving the workouts or giving you the tips, which I have to stay more serious during these types of videos. But this talking video was lots of fun and lots of joking and i loved this time spending with my precious little sister i love you so much mm. sonia thank you so much so anyways guys we love you so 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 much thank you so much for watching let us know what was the surprise for you in this video what was uh, what you expected to hear from us and let me know also what types of other videos um, other videos you may want to see on my channel and subscribe to it if you are not subscribed already to see more ballet related content and wishing you all the very very best and we will see you in the next videos bye bye, bye.